And how about another vanilla Debian-based distro for the series? Sparky Linux just had a new release on their semi-rolling branch just a couple weeks ago, and we're going to check it out. Sparky Linux is a Linux distribution that is based on Debian, very similar to MX Linux, which we looked at in the previous episode. Sparky is designed to be fast, light, and fully customizable to fit the user's needs. As such, Sparky is not a new users or beginners distro by any means, and since we're going to be looking at the semi-rolling or testing branch in this video, buckle up because there are some road bumps along the way. Sparky uses a live session with Calamares for the installer. It's a pretty run-of-the-mill install process except for Sparky is very opinionated about security, and in particular your password. My standard test password is my favorite type of duck, but that didn't pass the password checker, so I had to make a new one. Now despite not being a noob-friendly distro, Sparky did have a welcome app of sorts. I think it's more or less just a script that asks you if you want to do some things after a fresh install, like run a full upgrade or install some additional languages, but it's still a thing. We're going to be looking at Sparky Linux with Mate 1.24 here, and a fresh install weighed in at about 5.7 gigabytes, which actually seems rather heavy. In the way of memory usage, Free told us that Sparky was consuming 502 megabytes of memory at idle, which is, I'm pretty sure, the lowest memory usage of all of the distros we've seen so far in the series. HTOP showed us that the distro was doing practically nothing at idle, with only 74 tasks and 124 threads. Look at that CPU usage though, there's nothing going on. So the first road bump I ran into was with the theme. This is the Mate desktop, with a pretty slick theme and style. I liked it a lot until I tried to change it. I used Mate tweaks to see what the desktop presets were, and it completely hosed the desktop. As you can see, the top panel is just dead. After I got the panel back to normal, I tried playing with the appearance preferences and hosed it again. The panel worked, but the styling was totally busted. I eventually reinstalled Sparky from scratch because I didn't want to spend any more time trying to fix the styling and stuff. Despite these troubles though, I liked the default theme, and I'm unsure if the panel and style issues were because Sparky or because of the rolling Debian testing base. The default background was actually pretty cool, so I stuck with it. The rest of the wallpapers Sparky ships with are surprisingly lackluster. They're basically just stock landscape pictures that are pretty underwhelming. Now much like MX Linux, Sparky ships with its own set of custom tools, and if I'm honest, this app is a bit of a mess. It didn't resize correctly, the icons have way too much text and don't scale very well, and there's no search, apps and tools were hard to find, ugh, but I loved it. The idea is really cool, it reminds me a lot of OpenSUSE's Yast. It's like a messy desk drawer with a bunch of important but random stuff. Basically what it really needs is a search or filter function. For the default app section, I recorded this footage before I reinstalled to fix the styling issue, so that's why the icons and decorations look weird. Sparky's default set of apps were functional, albeit utilitarian. Sparky's not trying to be an every man's desktop distro, so it doesn't need lots of apps with bells and whistles. It has your standards though, media apps and players, and office apps and web browser, as well as some specialized apps like Bleachbit. I appreciate that they didn't go bananas pre-installing a bunch of apps like other distributions do. For installing updates, Sparky provides a few different options. You can use Synaptic, which comes pre-installed, or you can use the Aptus tool, which is the custom Sparky stuff, which provides two very similar options. Upgrade the system, and safely upgrade the system. Since this is the semi-rolling edition of Sparky, there are regular updates and I had like six new updates while I was capturing footage for this video. Installing the NVIDIA driver is the next big road bump in the episode. Rather than going into the process of how I tried to install the drivers, I'll just say it didn't work. I'm pretty sure this is the fault, if you want to call it that, of Debian testing rather than Sparky itself, but it's not surprising and it's not that big of a deal. I don't doubt that with enough effort you could get it working, but it didn't work out of the box and that's what we look for in the series. We'll be using the open source driver for the gaming segment. Systemd Analyze reported something like 30 seconds to start up, which I'm highly skeptical of. If you folks know of a better way of measuring the system startup time, please let me know as an issue on the DistroDelves GitHub repos so we can update this segment, because I feel like Sparky started quite a bit faster than this. In NeoFetch, we see the Sparky logo along with the official name, Sparky Linux 6 Po Tolo. The kernel version is 5.4, we've got 1,853 packages installed running Bash 5.0. The desktop is Mate 1.24, the window manager is Marco. 
The theme appears to be a cross between Sparky 5 and Sparky 6 using the Tela icon theme, which is gorgeous by the way, and the terminal font is just the generic monospace. And while I was filming the segment, I noticed that the memory showing up in NeoFetch is 465 megabytes out of 16 gigs. That is freaking low. So I asked Free what was up, and sure enough, Sparky was using 441 megabytes of memory. That is the lowest in the series by far. Wow. Next, we'll take a look at our external devices, our SD card plugged into an USB card reader mounted just fine, and note that the SD card was formatted with EXT FAT. The external SSD was also just fine, and neither required root to mount or unmount. Now we'll take a quick look at the file archive format. Sparky was able to open all of them, including the non-free RAR file format. Sparky was also able to open all of the audio files, and it opened each of them in VLC. All of the video files played, however, the DivX, AVI, Flash, and MP4 files struggled a bit to play. Much like MX Linux, Sparky's third-party app support was a bit spotty. The Caden Live app image opened just fine, but the Etcher app image did not. It complained about that same permissions error as MX did. Neither Snap nor Flatpak support is enabled or installed out of the box, but it's easy enough to install it using the AppDust tool. And since Sparky aims to be fully customizable by the user, this is probably intended. Out of the box, I was able to install most of the test apps either through Synaptic or through the AppDust tool, which also installs additional repos for certain apps, that's cool. The apps that I wasn't able to find were on Flathub anyways. And by the way, you can tell me what apps you'd like me to include in this part of the test by submitting an issue to update the script on GitHub. OBS recording without the NVIDIA driver and the NVENC encoder was fine, but the wizard recommended scaling output to just a comically small size. It did work though, I recorded some footage here with the X264 encoder and played it back without any issues. The Samba configuration was a bit weird. There's an option to enable folder sharing straight from the file manager through an extension, which is cool, but my user is not a member of the correct group. One way of solving this is to simply add the user to the group from the command line, but I was hoping to find a utility in the AppDust tool, which I did not find. Because these lists are not easy to parse with my eyeballs, I'm guessing I just missed it. I wasn't able to discover any computers on the Browse Network section either, but I was able to connect to my Windows laptop and my Linux workstation just fine using SMB and SSH respectively. My trusty old HP printer was discovered automatically, however Sparky makes you authenticate as root before updating settings for it, which is silly. Bluetooth is another one of those I couldn't find it situations. Matei's application search functionality is not great, but I couldn't find any application pertaining to Bluetooth. Maybe it's buried in a settings dialog, or maybe it just wasn't pre-installed. I also couldn't find anything regarding Bluetooth stuff in AppDust, but again, parsing through these lists is not easy. A filter would be so helpful. So for the gaming section, when the NVIDIA driver is not installed, we're just going to be looking at a 3D and a 2D game. The open source driver isn't anywhere near as performant as the official driver, but remember, it's a community effort with little to no support from NVIDIA. You gotta give the folks working on it credit. The native 3D game here is Brutal Doom running atop the GZ Doom engine. It chugs at times, but it is playable, barely. It didn't suffer from the same input lag that Open Mandriva did, but the frame rate is just about as bad. The 2D game here is Fregato, a phenomenal game if you haven't already played it. It seemed to run perfect, though I was playing with the keyboard and it felt like there was a tiny delay when trying to stop. Forgotto is sort of meant to be played with a controller or something like that, so that might just be normal when you're trying to use the keyboard. And now, how about those Geekbench benchmarks? Remember that 400 and something memory at idle? Does that translate somehow into good CPU performance? No idea. But these scores weren't too bad. Compared to MX Linux, it came in with a slightly lower score, but remember, MX Linux is the current leader of the pack when it comes to CPU scores like this, so that puts Sparky firmly in second place. And there's no Vulkan score since I wasn't able to install that NVIDIA driver. Now maybe this might surprise you, but I actually like Sparky Linux quite a lot. In a way, Sparky is like a canvas on top of Debian that provides you with some convenient tools to help you customize your Linux desktop. There's also specialized versions of Sparky for things like gaming, multimedia, and rescue disks. I think that the target audience of Sparky is power users who want to customize Linux distro based on Debian with some custom tools to make their lives easier. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves. If you want to contribute to the series and submit a new distro for review or an update to the script or something like that, hop on over to the Distro Delves repo and check it out. If you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about the channel, and links to some playlists with old and archived videos. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.